So this song is called The Music Play Song, and it's got all kinds of things in it. Whoa. <laughs> I'm kind of in a... <laughs> oh, wait, this little... There it is. The Music Play Song is um, written with a very... Okay. So here in this song... <laughs> three, take three. <laughs> this is a song, the music place song, written in a place called the music place. Yes, it was actually written in the music place. And it was written with a lot of flats. But here, notice that in the key signature, there are no flats because everything here is written in the key of C. Because all my songs, I use the computer and write it in the key of C. And then I let the computer do the flatting or sharpening. It allows you to change in between flats and sharps instantly. And also, it allows you to be able to remember things easier and read them easier because you don't have to keep remembering what's back in the beginning here of the key signature. And anyways, these days, since computers are here, we don't have to have key signatures anymore because that was a shortcut nice for writers in the old days when they wrote. And they used to write music. Well, they had to have a key signature. They didn't have to write all those extra flats or all those extra sharps. Well, now we got computers. We don't need to worry about them. Just let the computer do the work for us and let it be in the key of C. Well, everything I write is going to be here in the key of C, whether it's flatted or sharped. In this case, it's a lot of flats. In fact, the basic chords are the E flat chord and the A flat chord and the B flat chord and the E flat chord. It's a really nice, be careful chords. You can see the E flat chord, but then I'm adding an octave. Here's the B flat chord, but I have an inversion, which is closer to here. And then look at this from the E flat. If I just change right here, I get to an A flat chord. I'm not playing any bass. Here's an E flat bass. Here's an A flat bass. Here's an E flat bass. Here's a B flat bass. Here's an A flat bass. Here's an E flat bass. Here's a B flat bass and an E flat bass. That basically is the verse. I'm going to just play it. And yes, it's, it's just basic flat chords. However, in this song, notice that it's a bass clef right there. So technically it's here. I'm just gonna go solid chord right to here. And then to B flat right down here. Don't pay with notes. I'm just looking at the chord and the bass note. And so down to B flat here. We're going to E flat here. But really, it's low. See? It's very low. It is written that way. And so this is going to be the first change that I'm going to make in this music that you're actually going to be watching. And that is my right hand is always going to play an octave up. I'm always going to play an octave up instead of playing here. Where it's written, I'm going to play it here. So all these notes here. Now here's the most confusing part. There's a bass clef in order to identify the correct notes. This is an E flat. This is not a C flat. It's an E flat because it's bass clef. So it's down here, but I'm playing it up here. Okay, well that's the first um, altercation of the music that I'm talking about here. This music, I found out from fooling around with different patches in MIDI boxes that it sounds really cool on a vibraphone now i don't have a vibraphone here to show you but i'm just going to describe it briefly it's frequently found in jazz bands over on the side there was like the there was i think a couple bands that were or, or players that were just either vibraphone or like a quartet with a piano and a vibraphone anyway i've played with a vibraphone great instrument to play with it is like a marimba except it's metal bars with a pedal, a sustain pedal. Now here, interestingly enough, I don't really use a sustain pedal at all. I don't have a sustain pedal hook here. Anytime you've ever heard me play, I do not use a sustain pedal. Why? I think that you develop better technique playing legato, playing smoothly, playing connected without using a sustain pedal. I'm not saying sustain pedal is bad. I'm just saying it's overused. Just like reverb, you know, the echo in the air is overused. By the way, these are dry. Um, I mean, mean, there's no wetness. It's, see, ends when I, when I, the only delay that you hear is the scientific delay that the scientists invented in the laboratory when they were inventing the sound. Which happens to be 
changed. <laughs> Great. Okay, so this is um, the basics of basis of this song. So E flat chord or A flat chord or A, you know, whatever. But I wanted it to be played smooth. You could put down a sustain pedal, whatever, but I wanted it to play smooth. So I connected it as I played it. Remember, this is normally down here written, but I'm playing it up here. Okay, but I'm keeping the bass just pretty much the same, although I might be octaving more than normal than down here. Look at this. I'm holding the melody note, and it is E flat. It's just a lot of E flats. Look at the E flat. E flat, E flat, B. And then it goes down to a B because an E flat in the B flat chord. Not good. <laughs> Not good. Not good. Better to be a sweet note in this song. The music plays a very sweet place. Let's have sweet chords. So anyway, um, look at these chords. Now, so it, didn't, it, goes, it goes down to a D. and just stays there. But here, if I wanted to, like, not play it solid... If I didn't want to play it that way, and I just wanted to play it like smoothly, and not with a sustain pedal, smoothly, I could break it. But look at my look at my top fingers holding down. All of them are holding down a little bit. Left hand, telling Let's look at the right hand. Can you see? Can you? Can, I'll slow it down. Can you see that I'm I'm holding I'm holding each note as I go through. And it's very, like I would almost say, sticky. It's very connected together. All of this song, the eighth notes, are completely as many, as much as you can, connected together. What does music software in a computer, as you were just talking about, like let the computer do all the work for you, including write it out? It goes nuts. <laughs> it literally goes nuts. It doesn't know what to do. It says, wait a minute, you, if you played it all, all cleanly, like. It's so nice. The computer loves it. It'll just write little eighth notes, you know, really perfectly. Ding, 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 ding. But if you hold things down and make them sticky, <laughs> it doesn't like it. It says, what are you doing? Am I making some whole notes? Am I making some half notes? Am I making some underside, um, under melody notes that are like a. Uh, uh, let's say an alto voice or a tenor voice in between the bass and the trebles because I'm going to put some rest in there. In fact, I'm going to put tons of rest in there. Now you can see that sometimes there's a rest needed here. But before I turn on this thing tonight, I decided started doing this tonight. I spent an hour just deleting rest or, or what they call racing rest that had been created by when I played this. And I must admit, in fact, I think there's one right here. Oh, no, that's an either. Um, I must admit, this actual song was one of the first songs that I ever, I guess you'd say transcribed or, uh, you know, MIDI notated. Anyway, I'm going to go to the bigger screen. A bigger screen. I know you can't see the drop down. There you go. Okay, so as I <laughs> have already explained, but I'll explain again. This is being played up an octave. It's written here. It's so low sounding because I've taken the box, the sound box, and moved it down there. An octave. Bing! Dong! Whole block. Bing! Boom! And so it sounds a little grovelly way down here. <laughs> right? So I'm going to take this part and I'm going to move it up an octave, even though it's written right here, down an octave, because once again, this is a bass clef. Now, this I'm going to call the verse that we were just talking, just, just, just watching right now. I just want to remind everyone about that octave thing. Okay, so then when I pick up right here, oh, by the way, let me just go back to this. So I actually have removed even more rests that were in between all these notes. Remember, I was saying how sticky I play this. I hold down the notes as I'm playing up and down in the, and because the, the melody is just E flat, 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 and then finally D. 
So during that whole time of the E flat, I'm just moving in between the E flat chord, the full chord, E flat, full meaning octave, um, and then I'm just moving to the A flat chord, right? In by just moving the in between notes, keeping the common tone of E flat. You're moving the G and B flat to an A flat and a C, and then A flat in the bass octave. So what are what are the notes? Well, I'm not going to say what's the notes. But the notes, the the thing that I'm talking about right here, big chords, as you can see, are played stickily. Now the stems aren't going in the correct direction a lot of time, but I, I, and the music software just thought there was a bunch of different voices like soprano, alto, tenor, and bass, and so it started putting rest in everywhere because of the. It didn't know what this is. Instead of just going and cleaning, you know, nice clean eighth notes. I was holding him down. The computer went, oh, I didn't do that. And so now this is what I saw, these rests. And I'm like, oh, I got to get them out of there. So I think, so the last bit I had removed about 100, <laughs> no, maybe 50. And now this time too, I removed another 50 rests. So if you notice a little change in the, and also the sound I, um, uh, what do you call it? I I what am I I what do you call it? I what do you call it? It's louder, and it is also the correct setting on the box. It's still an octave down. All right, so music play a song. A flat, E flat, B flat. What melody finally moves to D? A flat. But a common tone of E flat as a melody. See, it's still bass clef, still bass clef. Bass clef, that's an E flat, then an F, then a G, still bass clef here. It's still bass clef, still bass clef, that's an F right here. I still get these weird arrows here. Look at that weird arrow. Ho ho! Look at this whole pink. Right. D flat, A flat. All stuck together, and there used to be all these little eighth note rests that were in between all these. Look at the top line right there. All these eighth note rests in between all of these because they were stuck together. And they're like, oh, here's a voicing, so I'm going to rest before it. I'm going to rest before it. I'm rest. So it was always a preceding rest. You didn't need it. But now at the end, end of the verse, this E flat, and then it picks up to treble clef in the chorus here. Here's the chorus. Now look what I do here. And I take the chord F minor seven. Now, um, um, it's almost an F sus. It's so it's F like four two. That's really, I'm like playing with the four. The melody is a four. It's not a seven, but it, I can easily put the seven in there. And you can see it, uh, uh, all the legal sweet notes in an F in a minor would be a two, a four, and a seven. So I got all those notes to play with all over the keyboard. Of the F minor. So I got the two and the four especially. When I'm going, remember I am playing an octave higher on this keyboard. It's being played on the little keyboard above. But anyway. And to a G sus. And look at look, I'm just holding down the G now. Look at all those G's tied together. You're like, well, why don't you just put a whole note there and a whole note there and tie them together? Or, or a dotted half note is because the music software it could not play all these beautiful stuck together notes if I did, and then show that very resolve, which is very hard to see because it's tying the C right there, but there is a B there, and it actually plays a B and a C. And I think I should probably remove that B C and I probably will the next time you see it. Because <laughs> it's kind of it really resolves there. So, and then, and then a, pre, a preceding fifth right there. A to an A flat major seven. Now look at how it switches back to bass clef in the melody. Because there's a lot of fatness here in the D flat. When we're really getting into this big flat, D flat major seven. We're coming from a A flat major seven. And then to a to a D flat major seven. It's just you know it's just pretty to pretty. <laughs> I 
It's like, I'm in a happy, pretty mode. Yes, I am. I'm in the chorus of the Music Play song. Um, but anyways, Jesus to a G here, then an A flat. Follow the melody. Top note. But look at that F becomes this F. Ha <laughs> ha, because we just switched clefs. E flat, tied, C, and then look, there it is, the beginning. It's a, it's a, it's a kicked, like not right on the down point, downbeat, but right before it, preceding it, a lot of preceding going on here, in the D flat melody, two. I'm going to take it to the next page. Uh, back to the common tone of, of um, the F minor for. Back to the G, Seuss. I got all Seuss notes there. The C is a legal note. You think, how can a legal note be uh, in a Seuss chord? Because it's made up of a C. It's in the G, Seuss. And then to, and then to resolve it, right, a half step below. So it's like a four, three, four, three. You wouldn't think like, oh, there's be no a, a four in a in a major. No, that's not right, right? Well, it is if it's Seuss. It sounds a lot better than ah Seuss. No, yes, Seuss. Um, and then resolve, and then take a jazz chord, a G seven plus nine. And I rarely use nines. I always, I'm sorry, a G seven flat nine. I rarely use nines. I always use twos all the time. But in the case of it's only if it's flatted or sharped on the nine do I use the number nine. Otherwise, it's always two. No matter where it is throughout the blocks of the keyboard, it's always a two, never nine. It's always a four, not an 11. It's always a six, not a 13. Anyway, that's what I always do here. This really applies right here because I am calling a G7 plus, I mean, sorry, flat nine because I do use flat nine. Because it's a weird chord, it has to be that far away. It's like not in a flat two, but it's a but it's a nice, nice chord when it's spread out. And it resolves to a G7. And look at that from that melancholy way to go a G, to a C minor. Two seven. And that's what's happening. And then let's keep that suit that's beautiful C minor seven. Two, this song was really built on a C minor. And a C minor then with a B flat becomes a C minor with a B flat and then move that down to an A flat major seven. See how that? And then look what's really close. G to a Seuss to oh that's the music play song. Yeah. Yeah, let's see that again. Okay, it's a C minor seven. To a, I'm, it's not on the music here, I'm just showing you. Then to a, to a B flat with a C minor seven. Now if I keep that C minor in my, in my, in my I'll make it a full C minor, full chords, C minor seven, with B flat bass octave, and then move it to A flat. What do I get? A flat major seven. And then watch if I just keep that common C and I move it down to a G, and I kind of fill it with a G Seuss, resolve to a G. Yeah, that's what's happening here. To a G Seuss, to a G Seuss, to a G7 flat nine, C minor seven, C minor seven, but the B flat bass, to an A flat. Look at all that, look at all those under notes. I have a little bit of more, oh, no, I kept that 64th rest in there because there's enough of a kick preceding, just a little bit. But I said, oh, I need to note that out. So you know, I kept some rest. And then to um, uh, A flat ma major seven, and I do a, all those common notes are, you remember it's a plus four, it's a plus four, it's okay in a major seven. It's, it's, it's a legal sweet note in a major seven, so that's in the melody. <laughs> that's basically what it, I'm just going C, D, E flat, C, D flat, C with an A flat bass. Then I, if, I, if I move that A flat bass to a B flat, I get a su, uh, uh, um, a E flat six with a B flat bass. To resolve to a B flat. Now to a G, look at this, G Seuss, seven, seven six. <laughs> a 
ton of notes and I am thumbing the five and the six. And it's gonna be too big resolution of a G6. So is it my thumbing? How would I ever reach that far without thumbing those two notes? I'm of the G. And now to a C minus seven, two, four. Look at that four, a, a, a thick four in the melody. And then I'm just gonna stay in that same position. Just move it down once again, just like I did before. And then I start C minor seven, then move it down to a B flat bass, and C minor seven, move it down to an A flat bass. Well, here I am doing the same thing. To, to B flat, to an A flat. And I'm gonna crawl back up again. Now using this E flat with a B flat bass. <laughs> Suspended, E flat with a B flat bass. B flat, B flat. Now remember we had a note called a, I mean a page. <laughs> there it is. I don't know where it is. <laughs> ah. 